thank you very much for coming here. Uh, just a real basic question. Um, ba some of your basic requirements in terms of your school that say differentiates um, how you hire, say, s teachers or, or faculty. That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, thanks. What's your name? Uh, my name is Paul. Paul. Oh, can I can I say something real quick? Uh, <laughs> Well, well, I have a mic for just a moment. Uh, I work for an organization called Community Empowerment Association. Uh, we work um, in a lot of neighborhoods here in Pittsburgh, such as your Homewoods, your East Lib, your Wilkinsburg, your Duquesne, your Keysport, Homestead, so on and so forth. I know hundreds and hundreds of kids that would love to be able to know how you got in your place. So if you are interested, holla at me. <laughs> okay, Paul, thank you for your commercial, and we're glad you did. <laughs> All right, no, seriously, holla at him, please. <laughs> when I look for, when I look for teachers, I look for somebody who loves this stuff. I actually look for somebody, when I'm looking on their resume, I wanna hear that, that I wanna see that in their downtime, they work with kids. I don't care if it's a church or mosque or synagogue. I don't care if they coach. I, I usually look for coaches, to be honest with you. I find people who coach something. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of coaches work for free. And they work long. And they care. And they have a lot of different ways to communicate with kids. I think anybody who's in education should consider coaching in some way, shape, or form. Not because you love sports, but because it gives you a way to to find different methods of communicating. Lead something that requires you to work with kids. Because when you get kids out of the classroom, they're kids. Like they're really kids then. And wide open kids, too. And then you get to see that like teenage girls are insane. <laughs> and they might be the meanest people you will ever meet. <laughs> like I, I am my God. Like just rotten. <laughs> say some things about like what did you what did you say? They they and then just as quick they get all emotional like they love you and they go from one to like zero to sixty and back again. Or you get to see teenage boys who don't watch. That's just, you know just can become morbidly lazy. <laughs> and, and you can ask them, you can say, did you watch today then? <laughs> and they really would think about it. That's it, and I think, get your behind in there and watch. So what I look for is I look for people who have, who work with kids when they don't work with kids. Who, and, and I ask a question, I actually talked about it earlier. I ask a question, I ask them, what if, if 20% of the kids in your class failed the exam, what would you do? And what I want them to say is, I want them to hear they're very upset, but I want them to say, I, you know, cuss somebody out, I, I ran out here crying. I want to know that they have a visceral reaction to that. Because 20% is a high number. And if somebody told you that 20% chance of the thing that you're riding and not making it home, you get another ride. I and mean, 20% is high. And so I want to hear that they want to do and be around kids. They have to love kids. In order to work with kids, you really got to love them. Like you just got to like the stuff that they do. The things that they do can't bother you. You can't be bothered by the fact that some days they have bad days, some days they have good days. Some days they come in there and they're just the biggest, beautiful, whatever you want to be. And some days they come in and you're like, what is wrong with you? You can't even peace. This one girl named it. This one girl named Shamika. Shamika, one day she comes in and hi, Dad. She's gonna give me a hug and I'll love you. And the next day she walks by like I stink. <laughs> what I do to you? You have to be able to approach the children with a sense of humor. You have to be able to take what's coming because they don't listen, man. They ain't trying to hurt you. They just trying to figure out who they are. There's nothing personal. You can't hold a grudge ever with kids. We've had kids leave the school and then realize what they've done. <clears throat>
and have a kid say, can I come back? It takes a lot, even for a grown person, to say, I messed up pretty bad. You have to be able to have these sensibilities. You have to be able to have this in you. And I'm looking for that when I, when I hit it. And I want winners. I want people who take winning personally. Who, who set their mind to winning, who said they want to be the very best. I like showy teachers. I like teachers who want, who like, you got to see me do this. And I want them to do because that means that they put a lot into it. Teachers who don't want you in their classroom, man. I, I go through teachers a lot. I know this is a This is the first year since we've opened that I'm not letting somebody go. There's one in my, and she made it. She's living by the game. <laughs> and it's because I need to be able to walk around the building and I can't feel like any room in the room I need to walk by fast. If there's any room that I'm a little ashamed of and I don't want to bring visitors to, oh, they got to go. If there's one teacher in there, and I say this because I have seen one of the major reasons why schools fail, I talked to you about the teachers union, but the bigger reason why they fail is because they got punk principals who are scared of teachers. And they're scared to do the work. And so since they don't want to do the work, they just leave it as it is, and they leave that mess. And it's good teachers who teach next to somebody who can't teach, and they don't do anything about it. They want kids to stop, you know, to, to, you know, the snitching thing. They want them to snitch, but then they don't. They allow somebody to get paid next door to not do their job. Every single teacher in most schools has at least 120 students under their responsibility. 120. It's a lot of people. So I'm looking for somebody who takes it very seriously, who has certain sensibilities, who's had certain experience. I don't. I mean, the subject matter, you, if you're smart, I'll see it. But what's going to make you a great teacher is that you decide to do it, that you fall in love with this, and that you take it personally, that this child learns whatever it is that you're supposed to learn. <laughs> Thank you so much, and thank you so much, first of all, for actually having the courage to stand up to teachers and like really talk out against that because I think there's so few people that understand what that is really. Um, I also work for the same organization I called them, so I just want to really encourage people to do that. That's not my question. No, I, really? I, <laughs> that was a plug. Another plug, but I mean, I have tried to get a lot of college students before, and it, it's really hard. I mean, I know it's hard to get off campus, but you know, you're here, I think part of the reason that you go to college is to serve the community. So, my question is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, kind of twofold. As you are. <laughs> Number one. They got business before? <laughs> um, there, I wanted, you, you kind of mentioned that there are some basic standards that make a good school, a good school. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could maybe I yeah. know it's not like a No, 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 there is a formula. Like, no, 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 there is a formula. Actual formula. Yeah. And the second thing I wanted to know was, um, I know you're probably familiar with like the research of Roll and Fryer, and I wanted to know what you thought of um, incentive in teaching, specifically monetary incentive. Yeah. All right, let me answer the first one. What's your name? Diane. Diane, okay. Let me answer the first one, Diane. There is actually a formula for successful schools. When we started Capital Prep, what we did was we went to visit private college preparatory schools, and upper bound program. I went through an upper bound program. I'm not just hair club president, I was also a client. <laughs> and when I looked at the college preparatory schools, what I found was a particular structure that was consistent across every single one I saw. Even though they're independent, they were the same. Teachers had multiple roles. They taught. They coached and they advised. They call it triple threat. Anybody go to a prep school? That's what they call it. Teaching, coaching, and advising. That's what they do. Every single one of them. 